hope everybody is doing very well. We have a very important topic to discuss today, that is the importance of pre-medication in anodontics. Well, the ability to achieve profound pulpal anesthesia is a cornerstone in anodontic practice as it provides patients very obvious benefits but also does give a stress-free environment for the dentist to provide quality treatment. But in certain cases like those of irreversible pulpitis and hot tooth cases, it becomes difficult to achieve mandibular anesthesia even after giving a successful inferior alveolar nerve block. So let us understand what are the reasons for the failure of inferior alveolar nerve block in such cases and how we can upgrade and enhance our knowledge to better deal with such cases and have more successful outcomes of inferior alveolar nerve block. Well, many theories have been proposed as a causative factor for the lack of achievement of successful anesthesia in mandibular teeth with irreversible pulpitis even after a successful inferior alveolar nerve block, which is indicated by soft tissue and lip numbness. In hot tooth cases or acute irreversible pulpitis cases, the success rate of inferior alveolar nerve block can be reduced to less than 30%, whereas by a comparison of the success rate of about 85% to 90%, which can be achieved in a non-inflamed teeth. Many theories have been proposed and some of them are that inflammatory processes lead to altered neural responses. Uh, there is lowered pH which hampers the ability of anesthetic to penetrate into the membrane. There is increase in the prostaglandins which activate the nociceptors. Uh, there is increase in the tetrodoxin resistant sodium channels, the sprouting of the nerve fibers, there's increase in the neuropeptides such as substance P. Furthermore, Anatomical factors such as the myelohyoid nerve have been held responsible for the failure in achievement of successful anesthesia. It has been suggested that the location of separation of myelohyoid nerve is away from the injection site and inferior alveolar block anesthesia may not be sufficient enough to be effective on these fibers. Finally, it has also been reported that apprehensive patients with lower brain thresholds are more likely to cause difficulty in obtaining a sufficient anesthetic effect. Well, after a lot of research, some of the proposed theories were just found to be myths. For example, the accessory innovation from the nerve to myelohyoid or alternative injection techniques like those of Vazirani, Akinosi and Gauget's technique. Well, accessory innovation from the nerve to myelohyoid was studied by many researchers. However, Clark et al. compared the inferior alveolar nerve block alone to a combination injection of inferior alveolar nerve block plus the myelohyoid nerve block, which was aided by the use of peripheral nerve stimulator. The investigators found that the myelohyoid injection did not significantly enhance the pulpal anesthesia of inferior alveolar nerve block. Another proposed theory was inaccuracy of injection site. Well, common sense suggests that positioning of the needle as close to the site of the nerve would increase the efficacy of inferior alveolar nerve block. However, ultrasonic studies found that in spite of an accurate block, it did not result in more successful pulpal anesthesia. The research speculated that migration of anesthetic solutions followed the path of least resistance and this was determined by facial planes and structures encountered in the pterygomandibular space. These studies provide an important clinical point that lack of pulpal anesthesia is not necessarily due to an inaccurate injection. The next uh, theory that was proposed was that you have to repeat the block if the lip is numb but the tooth was not anesthetized. Well, if the patient has profound lip numbness and experiences pain upon endodontic axis, repeating the inferior alveolar nerve block does not help the problem. Clinicians might think that another injection is helpful because the patient sometimes achieves pulpal anesthesia after the second in injection. However, the patient might just be experiencing slow onset of pulpal anesthesia. That is, the second injection does not provide additional anesthesia. 
it is the first injection that is just catching up due to the slow onset of palpal anesthesia another myth was increasing the volume of anesthetic agent well research shows that increasing the volume of anesthetic agent only increases the duration of action and has a faster onset of anesthesia well to conclude from this research is that inflammation has been regarded as one of the important factors that play a role in failed anesthetics as mediators of inflammate inflammation have the potential to stimulate nociceptor fibers even at very low thresholds and hence creating a state of hyperalgesia that is abnormally increased sensitivity to pain which is caused by inflammation and it causes damage to peripheral nerves and this often leads to unsuccessful anesthesia let's move on to understand how we can successfully manage this well effective pain management basically deals with 3d's that is when we start with the case we identify the offending tooth we understand the problem in the tooth and that would be the diagnosis that is patient complains of a prolonged sharp pain in a tooth with or without provocation and that would be a case of irreversible pulpitis now once we have our diagnosis we move on to the treatment now what we need to understand is that treatment plan consists of two things that is case management and also definitive treatment now it is important that we manage the inflammation to have a successful anesthesia before we proceed on to our definitive treatment hence management of endodontic pain should not only focus on the definitive treatment that is a root canal therapy that will remove the inflamed on the irritated pulp but also on the peripheral mechanisms of hyperalgesia which not only help in achieving successful anesthesia but also help in management of post operative pain and this is done by a third d that is by the use of drugs and medication which will help us manage the case so that we are able to control the hyperalgesia and give the patient a better experience of the endodontic treatment now how do we manage the case with the help of drugs well medication or drugs basically function by using two pathways either by reducing the input of pain at the site of injury for example like those of nsaids or by blocking the conduction of pain for example like those of the anesthetic agents now or they can be used solely or together for a better outcome now since a major focus of attention has been put on the reduction of inflammation prior to local anesthesia to enhance success of anesthetics let us see how that can be done with the help of pre medication first let us understand from this picture that when there is a stimulus or injury at a site there is an increase in the permeability of the sodium channels and hence there is an sodium influx increased sodium influx into the tissues and hence depolarization which leads to development of action potential and there is conduction of pain this is how pain conduction happens and how does our la block the conduction of pain it simply blocks the sodium channels and prevents the influx of sodium ions and there is no depolarization and there is no conduction of pain but what happens when there is an inflammation in case of inflammation inflammatory mediators that is prostaglandins are produced these prostaglandins upregulate the sodium channels and there is more influx of sodium ions and there is more easier depolarization that leads to a state of hyperalgesia that is increased sensitivity to pain so our local anesthetic is not able to block all the channels completely also these inflammatory mediators modify the sodium channels into tetrodoxin resistant sodium channels onto which our most common anesthetic that is lidocaine cannot bind these two mechanisms render the tooth non responsive to la 
So how do we make our local anesthetic more effective? What if we had something that would block the production or action of prostaglandins? Now then there would be no upregulation of sodium channels and or their modification and this would make our local anesthetic more effective. So let us move on to understand what can actually be used to make our local anesthetic more effective. Now let us understand which drugs have been successful to enhance the efficacy of anesthesia. The first group of drugs is the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which are the most commonly administered group of analgesics used in dentistry. Their mode of action is to block the cyclooxygenase enzyme that lowers the levels of prostaglandins produced in the arachidonic acid pathway and hence there is no upgrading of the sodium channels. Since there is no upgrading of sodium channels, there is no influx of sodium ions and there is no depolarization, there is no action potential and hence a better blocking of the pain. And this is how non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs help generate a better outcome of your inferior alveolar nerve block. Though multiple NSAIDs have been studied, the most successful one have, has been the ibuprofen. About 400 to 600 milligram of ibuprofen given 30 to 60 minutes before the block helps achieve or enhance the efficacy of the inferior alveolar nerve block. Though multiple other NSAIDs like those of endomethacin also has been compared to ibuprofen in achieving the success rate of inferior alveolar nerve block in patients with irreversible pulpitis. However, considering the side effects of endomethacin, the researchers recommend the use of ibuprofen over any other NSAIDs. However, in patients wherein there is a contraindication to use an NSAID, another group which can be used is the acetaminophen, which is very similar to paracetamol. Acetaminophen has dual mechanism of action, the first being a peripheral action, which is very similar to NSAIDs, that is by reducing the prostaglandin synthesis and preventing the development of action potential. Also, it has a more central actions like those of the opioid opioid analgesics and uh, because of this dual action it about 1000 mg of acetaminophen given 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure or the block can bring about the same amount of success in enhancing the efficacy of inferior alveolar nerve block in patients with irreversible pulpitis. Because these peripheral and central mechanisms differ from that of ibuprofen, a combination of ibuprofen and acetaminophen has been proposed as an alternative option in very acute cases of irreversible pulpitis as acetaminophen may have the potential to compensate for the effect which ibuprofen is unable to do alone. Another group of drugs are the opioids. Unlike the NSAIDs, they have a more central action and exert their analgesic effect by interacting with the opioid receptors. Hydrocodone is one of the opioids that has been investigated in terms of enhancing the anesthetic efficacy. It was used individually and in combination with acetaminophen and research found no difference in terms of increase of the anesthetic efficacy and proposed that opioids may not be effective during acute pain at a region where inflammation occurred previously. However, there was better pain tolerance by patients and this could be due to its euphoric effect of the opioids. The side effect of opioids such as sleep Sleepiness and nausea should always be considered before prescribing to patients and pre-medication with opioid should be thought as an option only when benefits overweigh the disadvantages. The third group of drugs are the drugs which are used for conscious sedation. Conscious sedation is a methodology that is used in dentistry specifically for patients with high anxiety levels and benzodiazepines are the most commonly used sedatives due to their pain reducing ability and safety. 
Benzodiazepines stimulate the GABA receptors and act against hyperalgesia by reducing the pain related anxiety. They stimulate the release of endogenous opioids that take part in the pain processing. Triazolam is an angiolytic agent that is advocated to be used in endodontic patients. 0.25 mg of triazolam was used sublingually in a research, but it did not increase the effectiveness of infidelvil nerve block in patients with irreversible pulpitis. Despite the results, the research drew the attention to the significance of anxiety and fear reduction and it indicated that it may help endodontic treatments to be more acceptable by patients. Benzodiazepines alone do not appear to exhibit an increasing effect of inferior alveolar nerve block in patients undergoing irreversible pulpitis. Combination of benzodiazepines with other analgesics such as NSAIDs appear to be beneficial. Nevertheless, they seem to be a good option for management and anxiety reduction of apprehensive patients provided that a deep, profound anesthesia is also achieved. Nitrous oxide is another more commonly used inhalation anesthetic in dentistry. The research report that nitrous oxide targets both opioid receptors and NMDA receptors to provide analgesia, but higher concentrations are required to bring the effect and hence the side effects. The limited number of research on this group of drugs necessitates further supporting research. Well, the takeaway message is that pre-medication is beneficial for success of inferior alveolar nerve block in cases of irreversible pulpitis. And the first drug of choice is about 400 to 600 mg of ibuprofen given 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure. If there is a contraindication of ibuprofen, 1000 mg of acetaminophen is the drug of choice. However, in severe cases with no contraindication to ibuprofen, a combination of ibuprofen and acetaminophen will bring out better results to enhance the efficacy of inferior alveolar nerve block. Opioids individually, even though they have a central action, do not provide as good as analgesic effect as those of ibuprofen or acetaminophen and are best used in combinations with NSAIDs. In severely apprehensive patients, analgesics like NSAIDs can be used in combinations with benzodiazepines like those of 0.25 mg of triazolam, which helps calm the patient and bring about better action of NSAID and hence increase the efficacy of inferior alveolar nerve block. I hope that this video was beneficial. Thank you for watching it. For more such videos, please like, share, follow and subscribe my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Instagram. Have a good day. Thank you.